that. Yeah. Okay, you said painted comics, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so did you mean Marvels? Oh boy. By uh, oh that boy. guy? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Paint the comics. Did you mean Lynn Varley's painted <laughs> colors on Batman: The Dark Knight Triumphant? Oh boy. Or maybe you meant uh, Melting Pot by Eastman, Talbot, this, and yes, Bisley? Yes, I did mean. This yes, is sick. Sure. Yeah. Like, Pull this book out. I do remember this. <laughs> so you said you said painted comics, and like I only had, I was like to my astonishment, I only have these like all this dorky superhero the Melting stuff. Pot rules though. But this Melting is Pot, wow, this is one yeah. of my first books that I ever got. Oh man, look at that. That I rules. I couldn't believe my dad let me get it because it was like. Uh, you know, not enough people know about Melting Pot. Mm -hmm. Bisley. I have some. Um, Eastman oh, and Talbot. That shit rules. Um, so cool. The textures on that. Is that an airbrush? Definitely. Well, there's a. it's a mix probably. Yeah, I mean like the ink, the inking texture. Well, it's I know probably the gouache. Yeah, maybe. I would say it's gouache and it's splatter and a, there's some airbrush involved. Oh, wow, this is sweet. Isn't um, that amazing? I've seen bits and pieces of this and I've, I have some Ninja Turtles comics that are drawn by Eric Talbot. Dude, I got this in um, the 90s. That's awesome. Uh, Talbot was tabling near me at, in Connecticut. I, I, I didn't wait, get did a I chance. Say Eric Talbot? Brian Talbot? What's oh, you this? didn't. You just said Talbot. Oh, okay. What is this guy's name? I think it's Eric. I thought it was Eric, too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll flip and check. Yeah. I mean, I'm terrible with names, so. Yeah, this is so I awesome. I do my best. What is, do, I didn't, what is this book about? Do we know? It's or is it just about being badass and cool? <laughs> yeah, it's just about giant monster warriors that are just, like, kicking down doors and everything else in their path. There's boobs in it. There's uh, all God, kinds of man. violence. Look how cool that looks. Yeah. That looks great. Someone should, like, I'm going to say, like, Rezo print this book or something. I mean, like, it's sick. The textures on there. So, yeah, I wanted. I thought it was funny that I would start with Alex Ross and then talk about <laughs> Frank Miller and Lynn Varley and then come to this one. I mean, there's connective tissue there. I mean, when like, I looked through no, my, nothing's off out, off limits here. Nothing's out of bounds. Yeah, no, fair enough. When I looked at my collection, I was like, do I only have painted comics? Comics like uh, Big Two comics? Yeah. Well, this is good actually because like look uh, at that dog. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> look at that purple monster. <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop looking. Um, wow, this book really flies off the rails here towards the end. It's right. wild. Um, but it's anyway, this bananas. is this is good because I most of the stuff I have I think is like it's like whenever I draw something and then paint it, I always feel like it's kind of like it's more like coloring than painting. Mm. Like there's I think there's a just in looking at the stuff I pulled here, there's a difference between like things that have been outlined and just colored with paint and things that are actually painted. Yeah, in that's like, fair. more of kind of like a fine art style. Like there's no there's no edge along here, mm. like. Not, not that one is better than the other. I'm just I'm curious if how many comics are out there that aren't just like kind of coloring with a, with a paintbrush. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I think you have to have some knowledge of how to paint, right? Yeah, we got to win that '69 Camaro. Oh man, kitchen sink hand painted by Simon Bisley. Oh my god, we got to track it down. We <laughs> Who at least owns gotta, this? We got to track down pictures of it at least. If, if you out there are listening and you own this 1969 Camaro painted by Simon Bisley, please get at us with some photos. Yeah, Eric Talbot. We were right. So Eric this Talbot. is a Kevin Eastman joint. Uh, it's put up by Dennis Kitchen. And uh, kitchen sink, yeah, kitchen sink, very cool gentleman, by the way. No, really, Dennis Kitchen. He was at CXC last year, we got to hang out a little bit. I got some Will Eisner drawings off of him. Oh, wow, yeah, real cool. Well, you got some like original Eisner, drawings? yeah, oh, I wow. got some original Will Eisner drawings. He just like had a portfolio full of them, and wow. I was like, uh, I'm not passing this up. So, I found these, and these were some of my first comics as a kid. I think I got this in 1993. Wow, my dad bought it for me at thanks, dad. He bought it for me <laughs> at um, at Graham Crackers Comics, which is Chicagoland's uh, greater comics. Does that still exist? Yeah, they do still exist, actually. There's some there. Hmm. So the this was more of a joke, the Alex Ross stuff. But the reason why I brought it by is because I got these at Joe Koch. I think I got all four of them for like 10, 12 bucks. Okay. Yeah, see, look, no outline on these. That's kind of yeah. what I'm talking about. This is raw, raw paint. Exactly. However you feel about Alex Ross, I can't say I'm a huge fan. But, yeah, I mean, I'm um, I'm not either. It, well, it just doesn't, it's not for me. It's not my style that, that, that I respond to. It's very realistic. Yeah. And that, to me, it's like you're showing proficiency or mastery of a craft, and that's fine, but I want that other dimension mm -hmm. i want it to go outside of reality i don't want to really? be in reality i live in reality exactly and so to me to look at hyper realistic drawings and paintings i mean 
Clearly you are talented and you have a mastery of your craft. But for me, I want to go to another dimension. Take me somewhere I've never been before. Yeah, and I want it to be larger than life. And yeah. To be fair, I've never read Marvel's. Maybe he's I haven't like, either. He might be riffing on this exact idea we're talking about. Yeah. If it's, if it's that smart or something, I don't know. I, but I don't want to see like the folds and the... I don't know. There's something about like, this looks like a guy playing dress up. It's the same right, problem right, I have right, with, right. with like superhero movies a lot of times like it just looks like dumb people in costumes like it doesn't it doesn't have that feeling of like wow it doesn't have a wow feeling this is kind of cool the metallic i will say uh, but i know what you mean um yeah i saw these and i was like whoa 12 bucks for the whole thing i was like deal i do got I'm, me. Really, I'm really into this yeah the clear cover at I like. some point i'm gonna risk putting some uh transparent shit oh in yeah the, in the yeah machine yes. just to try to do something like this definitely I'm so terrified definitely do that yeah, this is more the same. I mean, this is, again, masterfully done, but just, that's just pretty sweet like galactus. The, but is it, though? Like, this looks like, <laughs> this looks like... Just the guy crouching? Uh, you know, a cosplay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, With I a green know, screen. I just don't think that looks cool at all. I guess I, I mean it's technically. I responded to this. I responded to the scale. Yeah. You know the thing that that I responded to just in that moment, which was pretty authentic. It's the action figure thing. Yeah. It's like whoa, cool. Yeah, like that, I'm ten. That also looks like a man playing with action figures. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, he <laughs> like he's done. He has all his friends pose. Like that looks ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look cool at all. Anyway, so I don't want to talk shit well, no. Part. So I brought these as a as a lark, but but that's because they're painted, and then I, you know. I brought this too, and that was funny. Which does look cool. This right? this rules, and it this is the original one, and the reason why I brought it is because it's creased. But this is yeah, this is the OG one from the eighties, mm -hmm. and so I these mean, were painted. I feel like they're watercolored, like light box, I guess. Under like were they light box painted or? Did, like, oh, um, I'm not sure if they did a blue line method where they printed out the the inks blue line or oh. like pencils blue line, and then it was colored, hmm. or if they did. Um, if they did the clear layover, yeah, like they probably just did inks printed out on an acetate. There was a uh, and they lay over and then you paint under, like animation. Yeah, there was a year. Wait, I'm walking away from my but I mean, like this looks sweet. Like yeah. this, that's dope. Like the Batman in all brown, like that. Oh, it's great. This, so this looks cool. amazing. But see, like this is this is hyperbolic. Like that's a that's a right. giant man. Exactly. It doesn't look like it's not your, real. It look like your neighbor, like doing something you're not supposed to see <laughs> exactly and that's why we get a lot of that with the mutants in this too right they're like outside of life they have a mouth like a shark like nobody nobody looks like this like no one has a giant spiny like uh dune popcorn bucket mouth look at this yeah. you know <laughs> what i mean <laughs> is that the new standard for that shape <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. anyway so i brought those as a joke but the Batman wasn't really a joke, and then I found the Cobra, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? There's a lot of painting in this too. There's a yeah. he uses every medium in this. He uses Color pencil, pencils. he uses markers, he uses yeah. he paints. There's this giant explosion in the beginning, and I swear it's all painted. Let me find it. It's coming right up. There's the ink. You can see the thick ink outlines. He does these like painterly yeah, explosions. Like a wash. You can wash see it. Thing. It might even be acrylic. Who knows? Yeah, it could be ink wash. There you go. Yeah. And like. Sick. It looks so sweet. That's like amazing. here, this might be that same black ink that he's just taken in and colorized and then painted underneath. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's such a joy in these Copra, but Copra, Copra, I'm not quite sure. There's such a joy in reading these where you can tell it's like, it has that quality of being incredibly sophisticated and experimental, but it feels like a, like a kid with a whole box of supplies. Totally. I mean, yes, I agree. And that's why I brought this too, because I was like, there's a lot of painterly marks mm -hmm. in here. Like, look at that, just that yeah, little bit of sky yeah. on all this washed out gray. And it's like- It sets the scene though, it sets the feeling. Totally, and that's what it feels like when you're walking in Bushwick in like the industrial area mm -hmm. and it's all like the cement factories and you look up at the sky like, and it's like pretty. glowing from behind. Yeah. I mean, so I brought this as like, let's look at the bridge, right? Like, let's look at, oh, yeah. let's look at all sides of the spectrum and try to like, get closer and closer to what we like yeah so i mean i like i'm really interested in painted comics because i like most of the comics i do are black and white i really don't enjoy the coloring process i'm trying to kind of experiment and find ways to like like find something that i like because i want to do comics in color i like black and white comics a lot but i want to add even like a limited color something like that but i i really i get to, i finish the drawings and i'm like it's done i like it's kind of a philosophical or mental thing for me, where like the coloring process just feels kind of superfluous. So one, I, I really think that Brecht Evans Evans, oh even is yeah. is the um, is the thing that I think about the most when I think about painted comics because I think he does this great thing where um, awesome. like the way it's painted is part of the book. 
It's not like I drew it and now I'm painting it. Mm. Like the way the painting, the act of painting it is the act of making the book, is right. the act of drawing the book. And every single page is full of some kind of visual inventiveness that I just find really fascinating. Yeah, this is great. And um, no holding lines, huh? No holding lines at all. And mm. a lot of times there might be like a wash for a shape. I don't know which he does first, That's but so there will cool. be. Um, this is like a common technique he uses, which is, oh, sorry. No, um, there'll be like kind of a wash under it, and then just a little detail will be drawn with a fine line, but nothing is outlined fully and then filled in. So it's, and I mean, just like stuff like this is yeah. so, it's so really neat. nice. And um, I don't think there are too many cartoonists and too many artists out there that I'm aware of who really incorporate the coloring process awesome. into the drawing process. Like they're, they're right. one and the same. It's not, it's not a, an assembly line thing of like drawing and then coloring. And so something like this is where I want to kind of move towards. I like, like this a lot. Like whatever. But you kind of have to think this way. Like mm. it's almost like you have to retrain your brain to kind of think in color or use the color as a certain. It's interesting too because he's assigning colors to characters, right? So mm -hmm. they stay consistent. Like in that cop scene, the cop was blue the and the people were, one was red and one was green. Yeah. And like, I mean, just like the translucency doesn't seem like it would work. It really does. Like work. it seems like it'd be a, like it would be so easy for a lesser artist to make this just look like a sloppy mess. And yeah, it, everything that's really is hard to do. I mean, so you have readable. to be really clean when you do. The thing is, like watercolor is more exacting than people think. It's much yeah. more difficult than it seems. Mm -hmm. God, look at that waters. That's beautiful. so beautiful. Yeah, wow, this is a lovely book. Um, and also, like it would be also easy to make this totally random. Like one color is pink, one color is red, whatever. But like, right. there's so much emotion in this nighttime scene here. There's so much. It, it's like so evocative of that little space in that time and such an unusual composition too like they're the car is pulling in over here there's so much focus on the water mm -hmm. yeah it's really lovely. like you just get that you just get this uh kind of zeal for for using these materials and um i don't know how he does it honestly it's like this whole book the way this guy works just seems like a magic trick to me it really does um, look like a magic trick like i don't know if he sketches it out first and then you know again light boxes over top of the paint right, or if it's right. just raw to you know paint to paper and it's all experimental I, I really don't know it looks to me like just paint to paper but obviously whenever you have a book you're not seeing the, all the the behind the scenes so you're not really it's not really clear mm -hmm. when you see the printed finished product there's no you have very little clue on how it's made usually yeah because you know a magician hides their tricks right totally and yeah there's kind of a flashback here and these are all these washy mm. black and whites there's that's a really, really vivid too. memory of a girl that's like painted more realistically i just every, every bit of this that's page beautiful. is just like brimming with uh exciting very kind cool of formal i love this texture too that mm -hmm. with the it's definitely watercolor yeah or it could be, it could be gouache and really watercolor. yeah it could be like or there's, I've learned recently there's a difference between opaque watercolor and just regular watercolor. Mm. Like there's, there's something in between gouache and watercolor, which is the, I think the opaque watercolor. But I mean, just perfect wow. fish tank. Look, it's, it's really cool. Shit. And it would be, so, again, so easy for this to be completely unreadable and insane. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going backwards in this because I don't want to spoil anything because these books are, they're not spoilery, but I, I, I can't yeah. recommend reading these books enough because not only do they look gorgeous, they're just really, they're wonderful, wow. wonderful literary art. I had gotten one of Breck's books as well, and this came from Joe, and this is Night Animals. And when we talked about painted comics, I went in and was looking at mine, and I was like, oh. And in this, they're using ink. Right, that one's a little more outlined, I guess. Yeah, there's definitely like an ink and then like a wash of color on, on yeah, each drawing. And really limited color. I wonder, is this earlier? Maybe? That's a good question, I'm not sure, actually. 2011. 2011. This came from Joey. Joey there sent it. Too, Joe. <laughs> Shout out Joey, Joey Cakes from Comics Club. Sure, so this is 2012, so I'm not significantly earlier. Yeah, so just kind of maybe the like just another style, mm -hmm. you know. In this, they're uh, they've, you know, I don't know what's happening here. People getting carried away. Mm -hmm. literally, That's sweet. Literally, literally, carried, literally away. carried away. So yeah, yeah. really beautiful, um, an amazing hand, and like. Just lovely watercolor, yeah. The mm -hmm. skill is... So this shit is so time-consuming, too. Like, yeah. a, it's... I guess it's a lot of times coloring kind of feels like a... I don't know. If it's done... There are obviously a million ways to do it well with a computer or digitally appropriate or whatever. Right. But sometimes it does kind of feel like, well, I got to put color in there, so I got to slap it in. And there's there's a million lazy, lazy ways to color stuff out there. I brought this because I know you're a fan. And oh, again, John, yeah, I'm a huge John Cash fan. John Cash fan, <laughs> Johnny Cash. <laughs> and uh, I brought this because I I didn't know if you had a chance to look at it yet. I've actually never seen this. No. And um, 
the mysteries. Very painted. But oh, interesting. Reads That's like a super glossy. It is really glossy. I'll tilt it. It reads like more like a children's book. So I read that they worked on this collaboratively to the point where they were like both working on the same page sometimes like back, passing it back and forth yeah like, i feel like some of this is mixed media so he would make models yeah or like and there'd be photographs and, and there'd be paintings the photos, and drawings and, yeah. and i think what i heard i watched a little interview with them and they said that they worked on it for years and then threw everything out and started over again hmm. and so i don't know what that's about but that seems like really painstaking yeah and so these images are a combination of sculpture um, paint, uh, photography, and uh, drawing and painting. So it looks absolutely not like never in a million years if you showed me this book would I guess this was Bill Watterson was involved in this. Yeah, Watterson, right? Exactly. So we see Watterson a lot in these like in the angular and jaunty forms, and then Catched making some of the texture and sculpture. Um, yeah, amazing, hmm. uh, really cool. You know, when I read this, I. I don't know, maybe it was because I was so, I had so many expectations that when I read it, I, I just wish there was a little more to it, yeah. you know? I was like, I don't know, I this format, this like one sentence or two sentences per page, like picture book format is really difficult to do. Yeah, I'm kind of like, who is this for? Like who, who right, is this right. book for? What is the audience for this? Like, not that that matters. I mean- I, No, yeah, I, I hear I, you though. I, I, I never think you should make anything with the audience intended. Um, Needs to, <coughs> you need to buy a lint roller if you buy this book because yeah, that's, it will I hate that forever thing. be dirty. Like I, I cannot keep it from. It's like a magnet. It's like, oh, so yeah. frustrating. Well, so the thing, the impetus for this um, episode yeah, was coming. that Jesse Moynihan just finished. Jesse just finished um, his my magnum opus. I don't know. I want to make yeah. assumptions. Yeah. But um, just finished Congrats. forming book three, which I think I, 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 as far as I know, wraps up the story. Um, Forming Book One came out. When did this book come out? No Brow. Does No Brow even still exist? I'm not sure. When did this book come out? Are there no? Is there no indicia in this book? Oh, here we go. Uh, 2011. Okay, same same era. So 2011. That was 13 years ago. Oh my God. He just finished the third book. So anyway, congratulations to yeah. uh, Moynihan. I've never met, never met the man, but big fan. I've never met Jesse, but I have some of their original art. And uh, contact them, talk to them sometimes via Instagram. Oh, cool. Um, um, I think I shipped them some comics at some point. Yeah, so this book was a, a big deal for me when it came out. It was, uh, I've now kind of traced this sort of, I don't know, I don't want to say aesthetic or writing style, but this, I think this comes out of a little bit of like Matt Brinkman's work a little bit, but it's kind of these like people in these hyperbolic fantasy situations, but talking in contemporary parlance. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, who hired that ass wife? in the midst of saying like all this kind of fantasy vernacular jargon stuff. I mean, that's what got me was page right. Go back one page was when it's like, do you got any games? Yeah. What games, <laughs> what you, games got? you got? Incredible box. Yeah. <laughs> but mixed with, you know, assimilation, nation, crown control. I mean, there's like, A lot the, of the mix, yeah, the mixture of this stuff and then yeah. throwing in those, like, don't be such a dickhead yeah, yeah. is incredibly funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, and fully painted, I believe with gouache and airbrush. Yeah. I've definitely seen airbrush in their practice for and, sure. And uh, like outlined, which, uh, you know, got no beef with that, but outline, not everything is outlined. Like there's so much texture in sure. these, in these things too. Um, it's wild to see this now we're looking at the first book mm -hmm. where how far they've come in their style oh yeah like it's insane like 13 years right you live a whole lifetime in that time yeah. and so to watch <laughs> Aurora I mean, Mazda wants to know where we'll be seeing more yields from the mines tell daddy to eat my asshole <laughs> Mithras out like the, the, the timing of this is yeah, so quick yeah. and I know that he went on to work on Adventure Time and I know like there's so many cartoonists in this vein went on to work on Adventure Time and Adventure Time has that same feel of like yes. they're speaking with all this fantasy jargon these like these slang words and stuff but they're also speaking as if it's happening right now i guess yeah, I right. it's like this very casual way of talking yeah. about these very outlandish phrases i don't quite know how to articulate it they have like a lingo right mm -hmm. they have kind of like a yeah a cool shorthand so to speak yeah but yeah you're right i mean i think you're you're in you're on the you're in the area where you're saying like they're talking with a modern cadence, right? But it, but in in a way in a place where that doesn't quite fit. Exactly. But it, yeah. but the con the contrast is hilarious. I agree. It works really well. Um, love this too. The outline sometimes drops out for these kinds of like more Sweet. painterly. I don't know what's going on in this. I don't. Remember. It's been a while since I've read this in in, in full. But like he goes into some power mode and then the line drops out and it's just this kind of washy weird thing. Second um, formation. 
Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's Goku leveling up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think this is like proto, you know, proto Copra in a way of like just really experimenting and seeing how far you can go. I can imagine going back in time and asking him like, "Would you have done it this way if you knew what a journey this would be?" Yeah. Wow. Um, but I love these books, and so the first two came out from No Brow forever ago, and then I think he's just kind of been chipping away at this on patreon or I mean, he had a website for a he while he still does it's still up on the, the website still up and yeah. then skipped over to patreon that's I how think, i found it was through the website yeah i think you can now read the all three volumes on the on the website or on patreon and uh but i'm holding out for the book man i got it's so great so he so posted a question yeah. on his instagram he said would you want me to release the third book separate or collect all three together or like it was like a questionnaire like to the audience like how would how do you want me to print this now hmm. And I thought that was really cool. Did he post the results? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. It was quite. It was a while ago. It was at least yeah. a few months. I mean, ago. if the if the book is only one big book that has the third one, I'll buy it again. Yeah. Well, I don't have the first two, so I would love to buy it all collected together. Yeah. Well, stuff like this. Is but really by great. today' prices, it would probably be two hundred dollars. For the hardcover? For all three together? I doubt it. I mean, Fanta is putting out books that cost a hundred bucks, like wow, that Popeye that. book. Look at that shit rules. I know it's so cool. Um. Yeah, but they're also putting out uh, garbage that doesn't cost that much money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, great stuff. All right, well, I don't want to spoil any of this either. <laughs> this rules. Um, so amazing. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a bowl of Fruity Pebbles came to life. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, it's really fun, too. I don't know. Did you watch Adventure Time at all? Or uh, yeah, it's Adventure like Time? one of my favorite shows, yeah. I think. I've seen maybe like 30% of its entirety. I haven't seen that much of it. But it's really fun to watch, to kind of like watch it, look at the look at the credits, and then be like, "Oh, that's a cartoonist name I recognize." Then go read some of their yep. work, and then you can see it in the episode. Like you can you can once you once you're familiar with Jesse Moynihan's comics, you see his fingerprints all over that. Totally, show. and like I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's really well said. And Jesse's are some of my favorite episodes because they're the most philosophical. Mm. I feel like the the Moynihan episodes always have Finn and Jake going off in some other dimension or like tackling these like big questions of life or sure. have some kind of like philosophical spiritual bent to them which I really enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he worked on that other show Midnight Gospel Midnight which Gospel, has yes. which has a little bit more of that in it as well. I read this um Books of Magic. This is a Charles Vest joint. It's Game and writing, and then Bolton, Hampton, and Vess and Johnson each do one of the books. There's four books. Is that, is that, uh, John Bolton, Scott Paul Hampton, Johnson. Charles Vess, Paul Ooh. Johnson, lettered by Todd Klein. So these are all, you know, all these books have been super glossy that I've shown. Yeah. So we have the first one super painted. I mean, I thought of this immediately. You know, this is pre uh, Harry Potter, okay. and, and this kid gets picked up, uh, as a kid, he's skateboarding, and he's told that he's a wizard, essentially. And he gets met by all these, like, magical figures in the Vertigo universe. Mm -hmm. He even gets an owl. So, I don't know. No, no, no. Maybe JK is a big uh, Hellblazer fan. JK could have seen this Neil Gaiman joint, is all I'm saying. Because I mean, this came out in uh, originally in 1990. 90. 1990. Oh, 90, yeah, cool. I mean, it's not like Harry Potter is like the most original thing. No, ever. no, I know. But I'm just, I always think about this when I think about it. Because it's like the kid. The glasses. The glasses, the owl. Yeah. It's like, it just reminded me so much of it when I read it. But there's four different books and they're all painted in different styles. And the work here is pretty intense. And uh, it's pretty epic. I, I really do. This is one of my favorite uh, short format like collected trade paperbacks. Mm -hmm. There's I only four issues. I dope. haven't read much Gaiman, Gaiman. Whatever. Yeah, I just like him. Um, I haven't read very much of it, but I do like the variety of like artists that he works with or has worked with. Like yeah. anytime I looked at any of those um, Sandman books or whatever, like the artwork is all over the place. Yeah, for sure. Which I think is cool. I agree. I like how they. It has a his work to me has a fable quality to it, like a like a fable that is a kind of eternal and timeless this thing. Is cool. What is that? It's where he goes to like this abstraction. This land. It's like a ha this hairy gemstone. Yeah. It's like a, an abstract world where he meets. Yeah, who's like, doing this part? This is cool. this is, uh, this is Johnson, I think. Okay. Johnson does this outer, outside of reality. Yeah, these pages are kind of wild looking. Yeah, right? This is crazy. I mean, the Vertigo stuff is usually pretty solid. They did a good job. On 
the just the curation. The no, 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 just like DC Vertigo as a oh, yeah. as a, like an imprint. Their time. books are pretty solid through the nineties. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. like you can like the Shade, the tra- Changing Man. Great, that's a I great that series. One. That's fantastic. We read it uh, <laughs> for club. Oh, nice. That's before I joined, I guess. Yeah, that's a pretty good segue, I guess, to Sinkevich. I mean, who's the? He was the first one that came to mind when I was thinking of these things. Um, Straight Toasters is, is Straight Toasters is cool. Um, this has never meant much to me story wise, but I, I don't picked think these, I've ever seen it. I picked these books up here. Why don't you flip through it? I've never. Uh, I don't think I've ever looked at this. They're cool. I mean, so it comes from Epic, huh? Which Epic, is like yeah. Marvel's nice. They were trying to do nice comics to compete with DC Vertigo, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much, and that's why yeah. that's why that reminds me. This a lot has it. Yeah, this has a very quality. similar. This is so '90s. You know yeah. how you can like. You can just pick something up and go, that's that generation. Mm-hmm. But it's really hard to do it in the decade you're in. Yeah. But there's another, there's another, this I think is like cool 90s to me. Yeah, Like this yeah, yeah. looks dated in a way that I recognize the time, but it doesn't look dated in the sense that it looks corny and dumb. Right, there's, right, there's right. There's definitely like a, oh, that's yeah, so right. 90s that I think looks terrible, which mm. I don't want to name any names. But there's like, there's an, another, another side of that spectrum where it's like, this is not interesting <laughs> at all. And it's just totally stuck in that, in that realm. Uh, stray toasters, huh? Yeah, That's interesting. the the narrative is almost like just completely secondary to being able to kind of draw whatever he wants. I see. I think th- this is the only thing I know of his that he did on his own. Oh wow, he wrote and drew. yeah, he this is just his oh, project. Interesting, which is really cool because it's it's just raw, it's just raw Sinkevich like id. It's doing that thing where it's like the pages are bulking up and being hard to flip. This is great. I mean, it's wild. Yeah, there's all kinds of like you can refer- all- references to other things. You can always tell when somebody's excited to work on something because they really go all at it. Yeah, and again, it's similar to, um, I don't know, Brecht, it evens or someone that's like every page has its own kind of inventiveness on it. Mm. You can tell that he's like, he's going at each page with intention for like what that page needs. It's not just like, I'm going to draw a nine page, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to draw a 12 page grid, but panel, 12 panel grid. And then fill them in. Like he's not just filling in the boxes, right. like he's approaching each of these pages with intention and style and um technique in ways that suit whatever that page needs or whatever i love that this is my favorite cover I love this that's sweet yeah so good and then he did this electro assassin book more famously oh, sure. more mainstream but like how this how marvel published this like i have no idea this book is so weird i mean um, sinkevich was just on fire so it's yeah. like everybody wanted him for his books i mean I mean, he did that fan. run on um x uh, new mutants mm-hmm. right? this is after new mutants I yeah think. yeah but I've I just didn't look at this. All this empty space on the page. I think also Beautiful. airbrushy, washy. Um, all the all the interstitial pages have this great like pencil sketch. Mm. Um, I like the idea of attacking a comics page like a painter would, like mm-hmm. a big abstraction, and then just like chopping in some realism. Yeah, and I don't know how. I guess he would just leave these open for text and stuff. I don't know how you would like mock that up. But yeah, sometimes he gets shitloads of panels on here. I don't know if these were kind of collaged on there or painted bigger or smaller. Or... Yeah, they almost look like movie cells. Yeah, there is... I don't think there's an artist edition of this, but there is a book of of his originals. But I think it's just like random stuff from throughout his career. I don't think it's like this whole thing. But I would love to see these originals. I mean, yeah, look, this at, is wild. look at that title page. is amazing. That's so cool, yeah. Um, That's lovely. I haven't read this in its entirety in a long time either, but I pick it up all the time just to like look at it. It's it just, is it's pretty a... special. Sinkevich is a beast. It really is. And this the, this whole thing has this, both this and Straight Toasters have this weird dreamlike quality where it's kind of hard to keep up with like the logic of what's going on because there's yeah. just so much shit on the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, totally. And so I, it took me maybe three or four readings of this to just even get a grasp on like the plot of it. But I like that. I like putting down a book and being like, I didn't really grasp all I didn't that. Get it. I'm gonna have to go back to this and reinvestigate it. It's not frustrating to me. It's a, it's exciting. It's like I, I'm excited to pick that book up. Actually, you know, talking about it right now, I might read this tonight. Yeah, um, I'll read it too. I have one copy at home. And some cool collage. It, there's collage stuff in here too. There's a, there's a boob in this. Like it's, it's a Marvel. Yeah, wow. Marvel Marvel's finest. Marvel's um, finest release. Marvel's finest uh, nudity. Boobs. But um, there's also like anytime I JF did boobs. I think it's JFK shows up. It's always a collage of the same face. Mm. Oh yeah, down here. So there's there's like it's, just, it's really right? fun. Is it RFK? Oh yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I thought it was always just like a pastiche. Or um, whatever, like just really some him. also like classic pages in here. If you're familiar That's with any of this sweet. stuff, there's like iconic shit in here. Um, highly recommend this book. And this, again, another thing I can't believe this exists. This is what a few hundred pages of painted pages of painted stuff. Like I don't, so much. It work. seems like an impossible object. I see this thing. Yeah, this is a lot of pages. 
I have Electric Assassin, but it, it doesn't feel as heavy as this. It just feels like it has more in it. I don't know. I think I get that. I got that when I was way younger. In like a, I think I was on a road trip with my parents. I got it for like five bucks. I was like, this looks cool. Let's talk about Feral for a second. Yeah, Feral does a lot of painted work. Um, really excellent watercolorist. My only beef with Wrenchy's book is that I think it's printed a little too dark. Um, to really show off like I the see. colors, so a lot of these pages are just kind of heavy. And that's not his fault. That's, no, not at all. That's the printer. Totally. I, I have yeah. seen some of these originals, and they're beautiful. It's really hard to get. You know, one of the things you do when you're dealing with a printer is rounds of color revisions mm -hmm. and proofs. So you'll get big tear sheets sent back of these prints, and you'll have to write on there like ten percent less green mm -hmm. and send it back, and twenty percent less red. And send it back. And that has to be a print pro That's kind of a, a, a charming old-fashioned process because you, yeah. you can't do a print proof digitally. You right. literally have to look at the yep, page. Yep, exactly right. And they will send you digital proofs. Every, anywhere you go now will be like, it's extra for a printed proof. And right. like, of course it's extra because you have to do all the setup yeah. for the print proof like it was the regular thing. But you have to do that anyway. Well, they have to if they are, if you're going to go with them. This looks, I mean, yeah, so great. great. I don't care how dark this is. That looks dope. The well. art is great in this book. Oh, this book rules. This also yeah. has this kind of cool dreamlike quality where you're not really totally sure what's going on for a while. Um, it has this real spontaneous quality to it. And it, it also exists in kind of two parallel worlds. So it is kind of dreamlike in a lot of ways. There's like this kind of, um, I don't know, outsider-y sort of kid and you're not entirely sure how much of this is kind of taking place in his imagination or how mm. much of it is like a parallel universe sort of thing it sounds awesome it's really really cool some and great fantasy stuff yeah you, you've never read this no but you should borrow this it's great i would love to yeah this um, is this is one of those days where when you're like borrow it i'm like okay let me just yeah. take all this stuff <laughs> Get a, uh... oh is that a is that hold on so <laughs> we should finish talking about this but i saw this face lurking in the background here oh yeah <laughs> I knew exactly who it was. We'll get, we'll get to that in a second. Instantly recognizable. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm like scared of a paper object. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I mean, great textures. I've seen this him rules. do, uh, Farrell does a lot of time lapses on Instagram, that's which great. are really worth your time. Um, he does something that I think you've mentioned before, which is like this kind of gray wash first and yes. then layers the colors on top Love of that. it, yeah. which is just such a really nice way to get contrast in there and, and make sure that the colors all sort of fit together. I love this like smashed up skull. Also thing. doing the the wash first on the page, what it takes some of the pressure off you as the artist. Yeah, you don't because have... you do a wash and then you have a little texture there to play with. You mm -hmm. start to see some shapes emerge and it's yeah. like it's not just a white page staring you in the face. Yeah, totally. And I encourage when I when the kids are drawing, I encourage them to do that and you should see it. It really takes all the pressure off them. Yeah, he and um so I also have this book. Oh, that's somewhere. cool. He and Sophie Franz, who we've talked about in Oh, yeah, yeah. Issue, we love this, Sophie Franz. Did this together. Um, and you can really see the the gray washes in this book really well, just as an example. Yeah, that. that's sweet. Um, but they, Even the they, cover's dope. Yeah, they alternated pages. Whoa, that's so these, cool. Like, different monsters and stuff. They're Yo, really, that like, rules. Cool. Yeah. But so you can see how, like, the gray is sitting underneath that blue. Yeah. Um, I think they did one of these a day for uh, non, non-brand-sponsored Inktober. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, th this book is awesome. Yeah, draw October, <laughs> make October. Um, great stuff. Recommend this. Too. Oh, so cool. That's amazing. All yeah. right, I'm gonna pull out this ghastly image from behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See what's lurking underneath Yikes. that book. Look at this scary, this scary person here. All right, straight from the twisted mind of Al Columbia, we go into amnesia. Yeah. Wow. In the big magazine, you got the big like. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know the premise of this book or the idea behind this book? I don't know. He, he created like a. I'm just a director or a movie producer. It's a fictional guy. And mm -hmm. then these are just like the fictional movie posters for this fictional movie maker person or movie studio. I think it's a studio. Mm -hmm. um, and each one, you know, more horrifying than the last. Yeah, he is terrifying. <laughs> just terrifying. I mean, chopping up babies, monsters eating puppies yeah no no holds barred skinless in the world bodies Alcorn. there's a new one of these out i think it, uh, it carries yeah. on the same premise yeah, i don't know if yeah, it's the yeah. same fictional artist but it's just, it's the same sort of idea it's more, i actually is, thought it was the same book at first so i didn't get it but now i need to get it I know this is giving different. like darger vibes if he uh drew like a nickelodeon channel or something yeah i mean it is that fleischer yeah it has the fleischer, fleischer brothers style. yeah yeah for sure 
But the cool thing about Al Columbia, though, is I think he, he transcends that thing. Yeah, It's immediately so. recognizable as coming from a cer certain specific place, but he's able to make it his own. Right. And, you know, I think that's, that's a skill in and of itself to, like, take an existing format not format but like a, a genre like an area mm -hmm. of a or medium a style yeah but let's take like you know a look and then interpret it in your own way mm -hmm. i think that's use the existing form of comics or cartoons in this case right and then elevate it take it somewhere else yeah right like you would look at this i mean at least i would look at this and be like if i saw this without text and didn't know what the book was I wouldn't be like, oh, that's actually from a little Fleischer cartoon. I'd be like, that's the Al Columbia drawing. Like he's somehow he somehow right. made this style his thing. It's it's instantly recognizable in his way instead of being in a, the, in the other way. In a similar way, Tony Millionaire does the same thing with yeah. his style. Like I love this one. You so can tell awesome. right away that it's not some etching or engraving. It's so brutal. Yeah, that's insane. It's this awesome. is so disturbing. This book. Like, yeah, it really is. There's just something really unsettling about Al Columbia, and like, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, obviously very talented artist, but you can see how like dark the areas of their mind are. Yeah, it's rare that I pick this stuff up and I'm like, ooh, gotta check out some I mean, some even now. just this like ghoulish character on the front says it all. What did I pick this up for? Um, oh, um, a lot of goods in there. Yeah, a lot of goods in here. Oh, this one, it's uh, Moriarty. Oh. Uh, the paint tunist. Jerry oh. Moriarty. The guy from, um, Sherlock Holmes, right? Yep. The bad guy? Yep. Um, does these painted comics that are like, um, his whole style is kind of like what's, not style, but there's there's a lot of discourse around like, Underwear. is it painting, is it fine art, or is it, yeah, it's a funny page turn. <laughs> is it painting, is it fine art, is it comics, what's the difference, is there a difference, what's the point of talking about this? It's like this kind right. of ongoing like, non-conversation about yeah. his work. Um, well, I think painting borrows a lot from cartooning and it always has. Like, anybody who is a uh, self-taught painter mm -hmm. is a cartoonist, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so they're all borrowing. We're all borrowing from each other. Yeah. But it's like each frame is kind of composed like a painting would be. Like, you, right. like yeah, each yeah, one yeah. Could, be, could stand on its own. And in it's a way sequential. That, yeah, but I think, like, I don't know. It's, it's in, in, in something that's truly sequential relies on the next image. Mm -hmm. Something that's interesting about his work is I think like it all still works as individual images. Almost like there's there's enough reverence paid to each individual panel that like it doesn't rely on the next image. They 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 inform each other sure. and they sort of enhance each other, but you don't need them, which is is kind of like it makes it seem like it's kind of both fine art and this. I don't know. It's like we've talked before about how like if if a person is rearing back to throw a punch and then the next frame, he has punched the person. You need both of those for it to make mm -hmm. sense. Right. But in this, you kind of don't. Like it's each, that makes sense. each one works on its own, but they also work together. I don't know. I think he's he's exploring some other kind of angles of, of ways to tell kind of panel by panel storytelling, which I think is interesting. I'm not I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of like the style just on its own, but that's a a matter of taste. I mean, I like what this is doing. I like this story. I like the texture of this world. I find it compelling. Mm -hmm. Like a red street? That's intense. Yeah, it's really a really odd color choice. It's, it does have a very unnerving quality. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, but he has this book called What What is a Paintoonist? <laughs> sure. And so that I guess he's coined this phrase paintoonist. Like is it painting, is it cartooning? That sort of straddles the line there. I'll probably never say paintoonist again. It's a terrible yeah. word. Yeah, I don't, I don't think like it's a it. good word. <laughs> um, but I've heard great things about that book. I mean, this is cool. I'm into it. I like it. It also, like, if you read it wrong, it says pain tunist, which right. is like that stupid, like, comic books would break your heart. Mm. Fucking. Oh, I hate, right. I hate that attitude. I used to have like, a shirt from the band Spoon, mm -hmm. and whenever I'd wear a hoodie, it would just say poon <laughs> or poo, and it was terrible. <laughs> like, I couldn't wear it anymore. I was like, this shirt is embarrassing me. Um, sweet. I pulled this out too. I don't remember why. Let's take a look. I'd be All surprised right, for everybody. Let's get into it. <laughs> um, surprise for everyone. Here we oh, go. Oh, yeah. I thought this was cool. Um, it's a nice bright one to end on. I actually don't know who did this. Pink ladies. I'll let this up and figure oh, it out. Oh, it looks like, uh, the handwriting reminds me of, um, wait, I know, uh, I don't, I, it, I'll look it up. We'll put it in the credits or whatever. The handwriting kind of reminds me of Panther's handwriting, actually. Or maybe, well, I don't think this is him, but I'm, but the handwriting yeah. reminds me of, of his handwriting. I don't remember. I'll look it up. 
I should have done that before I put it down. It does have like a Nickelodeon. Yeah, era kind right, of like, exactly. Uh, lettering. Anyway, I thought this was cool because there's no outlines to this. So this it's is sweet. another raw painted, but painted not realistically at all. It kind of reminds me of a raw magazine, actually, mm -hmm. a little bit. Like it, like I would see it there. Yeah, but I mean, could not be further from Alex Ross. Like, it's, oh it's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I. I just thought that that would be a funny way to start the video. No, totally. Yeah, I just yeah. think it's funny to do, like, you, we start and end on these things that are extremely painterly, just yeah. in incredibly different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, um, This is a way more contemporary kind of fine arty. This looks like a David Hockney painting or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is not totally my style. This this style is not for me, personally. Yeah. It's not my cup of tea. But I like anybody who's going all the way in on whatever it is they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Like, if you're going all in on it, then I support you. But this is not something, on the strength of the art, this is not something I would pick up. Yeah, but you could, I could easily imagine walking into a gallery and seeing this 100%. painting that's like 12 feet by 8 feet. 100%, that's why I hate galleries. Yeah. I, mean, I, think, <laughs> I think fine art and contemporary art is bullshit. So. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. <laughs> I like... <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> yeah, fuck contemporary art. <laughs> yeah. Um, comics are what's up. <laughs> have you done any paint? Did you paint? Did you have you painted any comics? Uh, no, I very, but I used to make fine art. That's why I no, uh, yeah. I have such contempt for it. Oh, I pulled this out. This is a Lale um, zine. This is not Hell comics. Yeah. It's not comics, but it is painted, and it is a cartoonist painting. So this okay. this is also like for fine arty. Shout really... out to Lale. We saw them read uh, at uh, the the Domino thing. Yeah, read a story that was like. From 900 years in the future. It was wild. In, she's intellectually. Living, she's yeah. living in 3024. Major, sure. Majorly. For sure. But I think these are beautiful. Like, just They're a, gorgeous, a, yeah. Aesthetically, they're not. These look dope. I don't know if I would say these are comics, but you're, you know, like anything else, your brain starts to try to make those little connections. Yeah. Um, but it's just nice. Well, Lolly's like a force to be reckoned with. I think oh, the yeah. first time I met Lolly, she was like, You look like Wolverine. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, cool. <laughs> See you later. Sick. Yeah, later, dude. I brought Fog Island by Tommy Ungerer. I wanted to show this because Tommy Ungerer is uh, is a homie. Like I love Tommy Ungerer, and this is all painted. And this is a children's book. It is. Mean? It's a children's book, but it's from that era of like, should it really be for kids? Sure. You know. Yeah, I don't mean that pejoratively. This one, this one specifically, I think is a little more PG, but. You know, it, it talks about everyday life, but then it gets into wizard stuff, which mm. I think is really super sweet. Like and this wizard. this illustration is fantastic. I mean, we've looked at stuff that borrows from this. I was just going to say, that, I feel like that reminds me of something. I can't quite place it. Yeah. Something yeah. more contemporary, but I can't, I can't quite put my finger on it. 100%. You're going to see a character like this show up in Island now. Yeah. <laughs> the candle wizard. The candle wizard. So fun. But Unger is is a beast, you know? Like, his stories are so cool and weird. And I just wanted to bring this onto the channel because I wanted to start talking about Unger. Yes. I mean, it's wonderful. composition paint. Yeah, and you can see the paint. Like, they even back then, they did a good job of putting this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know when this was first put out. Probably in the 60s, I want to say. Um, we'll get to look at some of the indicia. I thought it would be in the front, but it must be in the back. Uh, he was born in 1931. Mm -hmm. Just and, passed away recently, right? Yeah, a few years ago. It doesn't say when the first edition was... This book was printed in 2013, but that doesn't help us. Yeah. Uh, this book, he did a lot of his work in the 60s and 70s. You'll see Unger does a lot of the uh, village voice covers during the Vietnam War mm. that are super intense, actually. And uh, I'll put some up in the video because they're shocking. Like, okay. his, it, they're like political posters. Sure. He comes from, like, he was born um, on the border of Switzerland and France. So they his family had to flee during the uh, yeah. occupation. And um, he came to New York. And funnily, this guy, back in the day when he was in New York, you could just walk into... Oh, it's a tiny little bit of red. It's so here. cool. It's nice. And then it goes to this. Yeah. You could just walk into art directors, like publishers, with your portfolio yeah. and just go in. So he didn't speak any English and it started raining and he had all his art with him. So he needed a box. So he went and grabbed this big cardboard box out of the garbage and he's walking from publisher to publisher, going from editor to editor. They're all laughing and kind of snickering. Mm -hmm. He had grabbed a... Uh, Trojans condoms box <laughs> and so he had all his art in like a folded wow. like condoms cardboard That's box great. and he was a wild person you know Unger is responsible um, for the title or for the where the wild things are how so well originally that story was called where the wild horses live okay and um, the author credits 
Tommy Unger's influence for introducing him to like oh, this wow. monster world and skewing his story more towards the macabre. Interesting. Were yeah. Sendak, were they friends? Or yeah, they were. Discovered his work no, the they were friends. They were like associate contemporaries. Hmm. And he really looked up to Unger and Sendak was like, if it wasn't for him, it wouldn't have been what it is. Like it would have never been cool. where the wild oh, things I are. I didn't yeah. know that little bit of trivia. That's cool. Yeah. Unger's a G. He, he, you know, he got canceled by the like school board, uh, the moms of the age, okay. because he did this book all about like uh, S and M bondage gear. Mm -hmm. So he like puts out all these kids As books. A kids book? oh, no, 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 separate for adults. <laughs> yeah, it's called. Uh, oh, what's it called? It's called like Pornicon or something. No, it's something, something, <laughs> it's something intense. Like the name is really, anyway, there's all this like S&M leather kink stuff. Mm -hmm. He puts it out and the, the parents like mom association at the time was like, absolutely not. How could you make this and make children's books? And he mm -hmm. goes, where do you think children come from? <laughs> Which is what awesome. A, a He's great. Anyway, you check out Tommy Unger. You won't be disappointed. And there's a documentary, uh, Far Out is Not Far Enough. Okay. And it's wonderful. I'm, I'm definitely interested in yeah, watching that. It's that's, wonderful. A, that's one of the things where it's like I'm familiar with the work and the level of influence and the level of importance in the field. And it's like uh, visually just not something I spend that much time with. So I'm definitely in curious. I want to do a whole episode on weird children's books. We should. That'd be, that's a great idea. There's some really strange stuff that came out in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And it's something, you know, I work in a school and like it's something that should come back. Like books, kids books are not weird anymore, which is a shame. Like yeah. kid, kids need to be weirded out and like. Not with not an S and M kind of way, but like the kids right, need to feel right, like a little right. uncomfortable about like being scared and being frightened and feeling these complicated emotions because then you can talk about them. Anyway, we'll save that conversation for that episode. But. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot to be said for the, the for the creative stuff and for the what was went into all these books that came out back then mm -hmm. that were just a little stranger than the kind of formulaic thing we get now. Yeah, that's all drawn, like, with the same procreate brushes and everything. They, they, right. These books all look exactly the same. Right. They're, well, they're, like, truncated Disney movies yeah. in a book form, you know? Ugh, not for me. Well, that's why we got this channel, so we can talk about all the crazy stuff that we think is uh, intellectually stimulating. Yeah, totally. All right, cool. Well, on that's to the next one, I guess. That about does it, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for coming out. Um, we've been getting a lot of comments on the, on the channel, and I, I try to respond to all of them if I can. But uh, tell your friends if you uh, like what we're doing, spread the word. Okay? Yeah, and if we if we get a blank spot on any of these topics, hit us up. Tell us what you're interested in. What what painted comics are you into? Oh yeah, we. I mean, this is all about community here, so we're really trying to um, keep on top of all that discourse. So if you have yeah, if you have recommendations, throw them in the comments. Hit us up. All right, thanks everybody. Toodles. Later. <laughs>